Hello, my name's Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about managing your money while, while job seeking. This is a course I do for some job clubs in the Thames Valley to help job seekers get a handle on where their finances are in order that they can concentrate their efforts on getting a job, concentrate their efforts on applications, interviews, and moving forwards with their lives. First thing to bear in mind is this is a disclaimer. I'm not a qualified financial advisor. So information here is indicative. Please seek professional advice before any action, for example, on pensions or the long term financial instruments. And please seek appropriate uh, advice regarding um, bankruptcy or other financial concerns. And there are resources within this uh, uh, presentation which will, be, um, which will be there to help you. Not in this part, but in a later part. So part one on managing your money and job seeking. So what we'll cover a little bit is about uh, psychology of money, budgeting, managing your outgoings, getting income and getting help. All these things to try to get yourself into a better place. So managing your finances after a shock. If you've lost your job, it also means losing your main income, your salary, and uh, things are associated with that, such as bonuses, etc. And you need to manage your finances during an emotionally difficult time. You'll have concerns about paying bills, potentially losing your home, your family relationships and future plans. All of this is up in the air and it's a difficult situation. You don't know how long the situation will last and you don't know how long you'd last because this is a stressful time. So getting help and talking with people is very important. So you need to understand the situation and develop a plan. So what does money mean to you? So this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which I'm sure you've seen in plenty of places. So money at the bottom end of the hierarchy, the physiological needs, Money pays for your food, for your heating, for your housing, basic living costs that you need to have. Money can also play for safety and security. Uh, money plays a part in our relationships, obligations and gifts, you know, giving a present to, uh, to uh, your spouse, giving a present to your child, giving a present to your parent, giving a present to your relative, you know, um, just or buying a round of drinks at a pub. All very important. Money plays a part in esteem and status. For some people more than others, but for all to some extent. And money can enable self-realization. But all of this has now been impacted by your situation, so you're now up in the air. Money attitudes. There'll be a separate video specifically looking at this within the series, but we'll just go over this very briefly now because it helps frame where you are. It's all usually linked to life experiences, including childhood and your cultural attitudes. The community you come from plays a big part in this. So people can be either savers versus spenders. People who are okay with debt are people who are horrified with debt. People who are anxious, people who are carefree. People who are planners, people who are spontaneous. People who tend to take risks and people who tend to be cautious. And also people who share the parental family values or people who rebel against them and have new ways of thinking. And there's more materials in the next video in, in the next video in this series, so we'll discuss that later. But again, this frames where you are and where you're going. So the first thing is, don't panic, from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. As well as ending a job, you've temporarily lost an income. You're feeling nervous, you're feeling anxious about the future. But you need to establish exactly where you are financially, and for people in some cultures that's actually quite difficult, emotionally. You need to avoid rash decisions to try to take a considered view. And beware of the sharks, particularly if you had a lump sum redundancy payment, because they're people who will want to get their, uh, their paws on it. And all of this is easier said than done when you're in a stressful place. So let's first of all look at budgeting. So setting up a budget, working out your current situation, your net worth, working out your outgoings, both obligatory things you have to pay and discretionary where you have a choice. Work out your income from other sources, savings, investments, properties, etc. And have some funds put aside for emergencies. So if the roof leaks, you'll have money to fix it, if that's possible. So first of all, to calculate your net worth. So on the left hand side, you have the assets table. Uh, so you have realizable assets, things such as cash, bank deposits, premium bonds, uh, slightly uh, less easily realizable assets, where you actually have to sell them. So bonds, ISAs, and also shares, but beware of capital gains tax if you have a particularly large share portfolio. Then they have longer term financial assets, such as endowment savings plans and various other things which are on a similar ilk. Then you have your pensions assets. Now in the UK you cannot access your pension before you age 55. Uh, and also accessing a pension might be something which is very difficult. 
and uh, that's something I would really strongly advise taking professional advice about. Then there's your property, both your main house equity and any second homes that you may have. And then physical assets, for example, cars, jewellery, boats, art, and gold coins and bullion. So you can make a spreadsheet, you can put all this down in a spreadsheet in the assets column. And then you have your liabilities. Short-term debts, things like credit cards, overdrafts, personal loans, and bills that will become due in the next month or so. Then your longer-term debt, things like car loans and lease, higher purchase or credit agreements. Now, some of these may have a penalty clauses for repaying them early, so you need to think about that. Very long-term debt, for example, mortgages. And also, last but definitely not emotionally least, informal debt, so loans from your friends and your family, which can be a lot harder to deal with emotionally than the uh, loans to a corporation. So, getting an expenditure budget. So, the three main categories in this. There's obligatory, which is what you have to have in order to avoid legal consequences. I.e. if you don't pay this, you either get fined or go to jail. Then there's the necessary, things that you need to have to have a basic lifestyle. And there are the lifestyle aspects, so things that make life that little bit better. Things that give you comfort, give, things that give you convenience, things that give you status. So looking at your expenditure budget, so we'll go to the obligatory first. So things like your mortgage or your rent to pay for your house, or flat, or the roof over your head. Interest on loans that you may have, and repayment plans for loans that you have. Things like council tax, TV license, alley money and child support if you're in that sort of situation, and taxes on any investment income, and anything else of a similar ilk. And the necessaries are the things you need to basically live. Uh, food is kind of useful, because otherwise you starve. Toiletries are kind of useful, because people avoid you if you don't use them. Ditto with detergents to keep us everything clean. Utilities such as gas, electric, water, telephones, and internet. Your car expenses, so your fuel, your tax, your insurance, car repairs, MOT. Insurance on your house, repairs on your house. Clothing, uh, yes, clothing is kind of essential. Um, basic socialising, just being able to get out of the house and have a coffee or beer with someone. And professional subscriptions, if you're a member of a professional organisation, keeping that up is very important. So those are some things that are on the expenditure side. And then we have lifestyle. Loads of stuff here, uh, from relatively basic things, such as uh, your cable TV, uh, to more advanced socialising, you know, going out for, for a nice meal. Your treats, your daily Starbucks or Costa. Gifts, particularly lavish gifts for special occasions. Entertainment. And then... The higher end of things, you know, private health, private education, your pets, particularly horses, yachts and sports cars, charity donations and investments. The key thing here to ask is two questions. Can I afford it? And is it really worth it? Is it really necessary? Is it worth it? The answer to that is yes. To both of those questions, go ahead. No problem. The answer to that is no. Maybe think about it. Or don't do it. But it's an emo some of these things have quite a lot of emotional attachment to them. So the key thing here is once you've got your budget, is to calculate a survival time, which is how long you will last and what you have. So that gives you an understanding of where you are. So you work out your realizable assets. So first of all, look at cash. So that's uh, bank savings, premium bonds, etc., or you know things that are easy to get uh, to to cash in immediately. And then your other financial assets, such as shares, ISAs, bonds, etc. And obviously, have a look at capital gains tax, because that may have a, an, an item, uh, an impact. Then you work out your monthly budget, both the bare bones, so obligations, plus bare necessities, plus emergencies. And then a slightly fatter budget, you know, have a few treats that make life a little bit better. So you divide your assets by your budget to get a survival time. So, for example, let's say the median UK savings is uh, £8,000. Let's say you have a £2,000 budget, you have four months of survival. Obviously, that is very different for each person, but it's important to, to know this because that gives you perspective so you can look for the future. So I'll now see you at part two where we'll look at the next thing.